All right, good morning, everybody. My name is Alec. I'm Kyle's son. Um, Dad sent me a text last night, and he wanted me to make a video for you guys. And he asked me to talk about um, the different ways that our family philosophy has kind of shaped me for the better. And so um, our family philosophy, as you guys have heard over and over and over, is thriving chaos, right? And thriving chaos really has shaped me in a couple different ways. I want to talk about three of them right now. The first way that this philosophy has shaped me is I've learned that I can be happy in whatever situation. Um, I'm a college kid, so I have different things going on, like my financial life, dating life, schoolwork, all that kind of different stuff. And it's not always, it's not always roses. It's not always rainbows and butterflies and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes I'll realize I'm about to run out of money or, you know, a girl that I've been pursuing or something like that, it won't work out or I'll get a bad grade on something like that. So, I mean, Different things happen, but I've realized that I can be happy in whatever situation presents itself. I think sometimes we think that a certain amount of suffering is necessary um, so that we can learn and grow. When I don't really think that that's necessarily true. We do have trials in our lives so that we can grow and we can learn from those, those experiences and get better. But that doesn't mean that we have to suffer so that the trial can be worth it. Does that make sense? We don't necessarily have to be sad and we don't necessarily have to be angry through those trials in order for us to learn what we need to learn. I think it's sometimes the opposite. Um, if we can learn to be happy in whatever situation we're in, that's when we're going to get the most out of that situation. That's when we're going to learn. And thriving chaos has really taught me that. And no matter the situation I'm in, um, even though that, that thing is still in the back of my mind, I can still smile and I can still be happy throughout my day. Um, and so that's really helped me out. That's the first thing. The second thing that I've learned is that the solution to any problem usually presents itself in the form of work, right? Does that make sense? So whenever we're looking for a solution to a problem, I find, and this is, this is, this is just general for me, that it rarely presents itself as just the solution with a, with a ribbon tied on top. The solution to a lot of our problems usually comes in the form of work. Um, and what that means is that we're going to have to put in a little bit of effort to make that solution happen, right? And that's not something that we should be bummed out about or think, oh man, I wish that it was so much more easy. We should be happy about that because in reality, when a solution presents itself in the form of work, excuse me, when a, when a, when a solution presents itself in the form of work, that's when we're going to have the chance to shine. That's when we're going to have the chance to grow. Um, for example, like I've said, I've had a couple times where I've realized I might run out of money, right? And instead of looking for the solution to come in the form of maybe a grant or a scholarship or something like that, which is still a good example, which is still a good opportunity that I've been looking into, I realized I'm going to have to get a job. I'm going to have to find a part-time job so that I can pay rent. So that solution to that problem, my financial problem, presented itself literally in the form of work. But that's different for any of our different, different solutions that we're looking for in life. If we're looking for a solution, don't count out the fact that it might be an opportunity to work harder or an opportunity to work smarter. Usually the solutions that we need require us to work a little bit harder. And that's okay. That's a good thing. That's not something that we should be upset about. That's something that we should be happy about because that's when we're really going to grow. The third thing that I've learned in the thriving chaos of the first, let's just go over it real quick. The first was that I can be happy in whatever situation. Number two is that the solution usually presents itself in the form of work. And the third one is that I am never alone, right? Sometimes when we have brothers or sisters or as parents, when we have children affected by autism, we think that no one knows what we're going through. And that's, that's something that we slip into sometimes. That's something that we think, you know, no one really understands the struggle that I have. And I feel deathly alone, really alone. And I felt that many, many times in my life, not just because of Eric and Rick and, and, and have them be affected by autism, but in, in other aspects of my life, I've just felt really alone, right? But the thriving chaos model has made me realize that I'm never alone. There's always people that will rally around me and help me. I just have to seek those people out. And that's a really important lesson to learn is how to seek out those people that will rally around us and support us, right? The number one like fountain for finding those people is your family, right? And that's one thing that the thriving chaos model has taught me is to put stock in my family, right? Because that family, my family is the support group that I need to get through that loneliness because it's something that, that happens all the time. So realize through thriving chaos that you're never alone, that you can build that support system in your family and also 
since I've been up here at college, I'm not around my family a lot, but I've learned how to make the right kind of friends that can support me and carry me through these different times, right? And so you're, I promise that you're never alone, right? Like I said, the solution usually presents itself in the form of work. You got to get out there and you got to find that support group. But I promise that they're there if you seek them out, right? Thriving Chaos, the, the one thing I love about Thriving Chaos is that it's a buddy system. It really is. That we're not alone. We can rely on other people and we can look to other people's examples to help build us up in these trying times, right? And so as, as a kid, as, as a young guy of 22 years old, I've learned a lot from Thriving Chaos. And those are the three main things. Let me just go over them one more time. That I can be happy in whatever situation. I can be happy and I can laugh and I can smile regardless of the different trials that are happening. Number two is that the solution to my problems usually presents itself in the form of work. And that I should be happy for that because I'm going to grow. And the third one is that I'm never alone. I have to seek out my support group, but the support group is always there. And there will be someone to help you out through those things. Those are just a couple of the things that I came up with here in a few minutes about how Thriving Chaos has helped me out. And, and I know that if you continue with the program, you're going to learn those three things and you're going to learn so much more and it's going to shape you. And I just want to add my testimony to that. I just want to know, I just want you to know that these things are going to help you out and you'll have the support systems that you need. So you guys have a great day. It was good to talk to you. Hopefully I'll get to make a video here pretty soon again.